right, this is part three. We're going to um, offset those triangular faces we created in part two. Uh, so let's just, I'll just start with that. This is draw offset curves and fillet. Uh, the input for this function will be these triangular faces. Now again, these are this is just a list. There's no no data tree here because we flattened everything at the end of part two. And the the basic idea here, and maybe we can go back to our single surface to make this a little more clear, is to offset each one of these curves inwards, and then to create a fillet at the the sharp corners, and then. Our, our last step is to create a planar face between those two. So the triangular faces are the only thing we need to do that. Um, we Let's start with an offset curve component since we know that's where we want to end up. We're going to have to create some, uh, some other data to get there. Uh, I believe this is in utilities under the curve uh, section, just an offset, not an offset on surface. So we need a curve to offset, offset distance, and a plane for offset operation. Uh, and it looks like we have some some corner options too, but we will um, we'll do our own fillet. So. The trick here is going to be offsetting in the plane that these triangles are drawn on. And uh, as you can see, we need that plane here. In this case, it's just uh, giving us the world x, y, and that's, that's certainly not what we want. So let's go over to vector. That's where all of our plane tools are. And since we know that these triangular faces all have three points, uh, in this case, we can make a plane through three points. Um, so let's let's grab all the vertices just like we did last time. So surface I explode. Um, we'll get all of the vertices. These will be in two branches of a data tree. Uh, so I think we're going to have to yeah, we'll use the, the item tool just to grab those. I'm going to just copy and paste these three. And we'll just override the, the vertices here. And as you can see, we're dealing with, with data trees. And that should make sense because, you know, we're giving it a list of two. And each, each one of those faces has multiple points, so it'll break it out into a tree. Um, shouldn't really matter. Uh, plane goes through any three points, so I don't. I don't really know if order matters here. Um, I suppose maybe the offset distance, uh, whether it's positive or negative, might have something to do with that. But just to keep it quick, we'll just do zero, one, two, and uh, those will, that'll create our two planes there. So. Again, the curve we want to offset is our the triangular faces. The plane we just created. And the offset distance, let's create a slider for that. So I'll just double click. I'll make slider equal to 5.000. So you might have noticed that when I initialize these with decimals it'll give me a floating point slider when I initialize them with integers it'll give me an integer slider uh, very handy if you don't want to go through editing each time you create a new slider okay so you can see what's going on here it looks like we're getting some pretty funky results and the wire display should tell the tale 
we are asking Grasshopper to match up two polyline curves with two planes, but since we had to make the jump to a data tree here, uh, the, the list and the data tree is creating probably uh, sets of two on each one instead of just offsetting a single curve. So let's, um, let's graft this and now you can see that we've got we've got this working. So I think the one we did in class this had to be a negative number uh, for me. Uh, some people it was positive and here as I'm doing it tonight it's a positive number. Again I think it depends on the direction of your polyline and the um, how you make your plane. Uh, but if you need this to be a negative number you can simply multiply it by negative one. Okay, let's hide let's hide everything that we don't need here. Just let's be looking at those inner curves because the next thing we want to do is uh, put a fillet on all of those. Um, curve utilities is where we'll find the fillet node. The curve we want to fillet is the are the offset curves, and we'll use another slider for the radius. And there we go. You can see we're generating those fillets there on those two two triangles. Um, let's name these and uh, make them the same color as the triangular faces. And we'll call them offset. And fillet radius. Again, we've got all of our inputs on one end of the function, and this these curves are going to be uh, the outputs. So I'm going to create a, a server. In this case, I'll just copy one since I know the color is already there. And I'll name this offset curves. Server. Make sure to override that. Now you'll notice um, that right now we're dealing with a data tree. So again, I'm going to flatten this at this point, just to make sure that we're we're keeping our kind of standard output in list format. And before we wrap up this part, let's just uh, let's just test with the whole surface and make sure that everything's working. Uh, so there are all of the the surfaces. We can turn on the triangular faces and hide um, our original offset curves. And now we should see we've got a we've got a very nice clean definition going where the these two sliders will drive this whole population and our tree structure since we're just dealing with lists won't change no matter uh, if we're working with just a single surface or uh, in this case you know quite a few quite a few subsurfaces okay so I'll just uh, well I didn't create my client let's let's just be sure to get all of our pieces together here. Um, again, this I'll just copy this, delete, make default, and group. Again, it'd be nice, nice if we had a little eyedropper. All right, let's hide that, show those and we'll we'll wrap this function up in a group. Make color default and uh, group control G. Okay, so three parts down, uh, quite a few more to go. Um, the next one is, should be pretty quick. We're just gonna create a planar surface here, and we'll introduce the. The shader tool to do some rendering in Grasshopper.